lot of issues with 1.8 so I'm doing this video to help you with 1.8 and then um, there's a video of 1.7 remember a little help video for that with the figurative versus the physical meaning that's below the 1.7 assignment uh, there's a video of 1.9 that's actually in your home page is what you're working on today Monday uh, the 19th and so as I'm grading as I'm sitting here home not feeling very well and I'm grading I'm seeing some issues with 1.8 so here's a help video that I'm going to place underneath um, the modules for 1.8 to kind of help you through it so in here you're analyzing claims reasoning and evidence in a nuanced argument uh, you're using a lot of context clues to determine meanings of multiple meaning words this was a big thing for this assignment right here this multiple meaning words um, and obviously we did this a little bit in class and, and you won't be doing this in the assignment to redo the assignment to reattempt it uh, but you're responding to a lot of text-based questions um, and in those text-based questions is what I'm seeing like short you know one uh, sentence answers and part of those are not even full sentences so that's the issue that I'm um, bringing to light to help you through that the Slides are helpful, but just go ahead and listen to this video. I'm going to walk you through kind of what you should be doing. So first you need to go to modules and select in your student workbook the Stop Expecting Games to Build Empathy by Julie Muncy. And you were to read the first two paragraphs, just the first two, and annotate the first two, and then come to a conclusion about the first three questions. All right. Something I said about annotating that I'm seeing, and I'm if I see this, I'm telling you it's incomplete. You need to listen and, and do the stuff I ask you to do. When we annotate, you don't want to highlight a full-blown paragraph. That is a big no. That's a no. This isn't going to cut it. Um, nor is saying that all of this right here is what we need and highlighting all of that. That is also a no. Um, the only time a full sentence will be highlighted for annotation purposes if it's a very short and strong sentence. Very short and strong sentence. So I even showed you, if you were on the Zoom or in class, I showed you an example of my annotations. And I asked you to copy them. I asked you to take a picture of them if you were on the Zoom class and make note as to how I did this. Not one full sentence is highlighted. Uh, I know this looks like highlight, but this is not. This is something that I'm making notes on over here in my comment section. And I should see some comments um, uh, versus what you think. Anything that confuses you or really highly interests you. These are things that either confuse me or highly interest me. I, I thought this was interesting because it's really on the news, the news that I watch anyways. It's not mainstream media. Um, this was confusing and it taught me a new uh, form of word. This was very interesting to me because she's so contradicting. She contradicts herself the entire time. And now, like, like I've explained to y'all, that's something that kind of aggravates me a little bit as a, just a personal preference. I'm not big on people that play both sides of the fence. You know, you usually have a pretty strong opinion about something and you stick to that opinion. You may change your mind. But you still must have that opinion. Don't be wishy-washy. And this is the immediately, immediately after reading this, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going to be a wishy-washy person. So I made that note over here. And then this also, a little bit of confusion for me because I don't listen to TED Talks. Um, a few people in class said that they did and that if it's on TED Talk, it's really big and happening right now. And that's great. TED Talk anointed. Anointed uh, does not mean that it's supposed to be on TED Talk. Go look that word up if you don't know it. But it's a play on words that if it's on TED Talk, it's like holy grail stuff. Um, but I found that confusing for me because I don't listen to TED Talk. So it doesn't incorporate me as much as it incorporates other people. So this is a strong example of how you should be reading throughout the rest of this passage and annotating using a very sporadic bits of... Um, of the key ideas, the details, making sure that you're getting those words opaque, crusades, chorus, most concretely, empathetic, empathy, anointed. You're looking for these other words also to bold and underline that you don't typically see very often. Um, uh, 
So make sure that you're paying attention to those annotation rules that I left for you, you know, in the assignment itself for the student workbook. Take a picture of that if you need to and then use it as your uh, guide. And then here's the assignment in itself. Um, again, the first two paragraphs need to be answered, need to be used to answer these first three questions. And when, if you were in class, we spoke heavily. We spoke very heavily of all three of these. And the ones that are in class that I'm reading your answers, I can tell you were not with us. So please make sure you're with us or with me at least as I go through and I explain these, these areas. What is the purpose of the Crusades, much she mentions in the first paragraph? The purpose of Crusades is the representation of the people that want to control the gaming world. Because the gaming world is still relatively new. It's not as young as it used to be. But the first game, I believe, came out in the 1960s. And it was an accident uh, made by the Navy. It was called Pong. And, you know, soon after that is when you had, you know, your... Uh, I think, oh gosh, what was the first name? I want to say it was Odyssey or something. And then Atari and then Nintendo and Sega and... All these other ones came about that. So but gaming is still relatively new. And the people um, who don't understand it want to go on a crusade to, you know, control it. And it says, who makes up the chorus, Muncie mentions in the second paragraph, and what is their point of view? I had somebody answer that the chorus believes this, and that's great, but you never answered that first question. Um, so who makes up the chorus? The chorus makes is made up of those who are pro gamers who sing the praises of gaming and um, basically that ha how it can build empathy and that is their point of view is they believe gaming can build empathy and that gaming is good for you. And then it says, why do you think Muncie chose to use the word crusade and chorus? If your if yours says over, change that over to and, it should be and chorus. And you're supposed to do this with like a small group or partner. Um, but she uses those words for two possible reasons, and you can ch choose the reason that you like them best. Um, go look up images of these two words, and it, was, it might be to help develop a, an imagery of understanding of what she's envisioning, or it could be your own personal bias. Um, so you need to answer that in a full-blown sentence. You were then supposed to double-click on your drawing, so you could edit it. And click on yourself and put yourself where you feel at on the scale between pro gamers and anti gamers. Okay. And then once you have yourself set on the scale, because a lot of people didn't move their scales, I need to move. The, them being down here tells me that they're not moved. So even if you say, I think Muncie's in the middle, come in this drawing, take Muncie, put her in the middle. Don't just leave everything down here because you're just telling me that you didn't do it. So once you finish that, then you need to answer these seven questions. And all these questions deal with Muncie. And then I ask, how do you know? So there should be two, if not three, sentences that answer these questions. Does Muncie believe that Fortnite is rotting children's brains? Um, Muncie does not believe that Fortnite is directly in response to rotting children's brains. I know this uh, based off her... Um, her direct statement that it's not where she starts paragraph two, even though she says probably. So in the mere fact that she's not fully sure, and if you're not fully sure, then you can't say that somebody believes something. That right there, what I just said, could be a perfect answer. And I'm leaving myself open for room for improvement and room for growth and room for um, conversation. But all in all, I answered the question in my own thinking. And that's what I need you to do. Do not start your sentence off with, well, I think, or I believe. Don't do that. Don't say yes, and then go into your explanation. Don't say no, and then go into your explanation. Don't do those things. That is very informal writing. That's very elementary writing. And we are trying to push our writing to the next level. Muncie believes that. Da, da, da. Muncie does not believe However, but you should be starting off your sentences with Muncie if it helps and not that yes or no stuff. 
Um, complete this and resubmit it if you have an incomplete, please. And make sure you are viewing videos for any other incompletes that you may have. And I will also be making a video for 1.10 for tomorrow or until I can return back to school. Thank you very much, and I will talk to you all later.